getting older, they're increasing somatic cell count. Now, this might not mean an awful lot to you guys who are in the US, because I understand that your threshold's around about, is it 600,000 cells? In the UK, um, we have a threshold between 150 and 200,000 cells, after which the farmers will be heavily financially penalised uh, in their milk check. So that sort of 50 cents per hundred weight can be very, very easily lost if these cell counts rise. The cell counts are a major, major part of our breeding goal. So the UK has a number of other issues that it wishes to address, and these aren't unique to us too. Extreme angularity, as we've grown in milk yield, angularity is as follows as a consequence. You breed for one, you get another. It's like a bog off deal, buy one, get one free. My fiance says to me, underneath this bleached hair is actually red hair and I've got freckles. And my fiance is convinced that these are very highly correlated with bad temper. I'm not so sure. Okay, at the same time as we've been getting angularity, cows have been getting bigger. You know, you get them by one, you get one free. Stature has increased in the UK and so has body depth. But these are actually negatively correlated with lifespan. Angularity is negatively correlated with lifespan, you call productive life, and also fertility. So in the UK, what have we done? Well, we've put a lot less emphasis on these traits. We tried to reduce the emphasis on, on these, particularly these three key body traits, and look for a balance. Okay. So our national type merit index now um, has been redeveloped completely to reflect longevity and to create this balance of functionality and longevity, which is really, really important. We've put lots of emphasis on, on mammary and legs and feet. At the same time as breeding for these, you are still getting You are still getting um, increases in these other traits because of the correlation between mammary and increasing milk yield, or the texture, that type of thing. So you are still seeing. But it doesn't mean that you're breeding smaller cows. Because of the correlation between these traits and these traits here, we aren't going to be breeding smaller cows. We're just trying to curb that very, very extreme uh, linear that we're seeing. Okay. So our philosophy is very simple. Keep going, Marge. Um, our philosophy is very, very simple. Longevity and functionality, and also efficiency and profitability, need to be balanced. As long as you need to get this can is to last as long as you need it to, and in your herd, and you need to be able to choose to call her that she does not call herself, that she lasts as long as you want to last. And during that time, she's got to produce efficiently to suit your system and suit your needs. So that's kind of a simple philosophy. So. I've told you a little about what we're doing, what are these cows likely to look like. So what I did was took some data from all the classified animals in 1999, give them a chance to, to last. And what we did was take these, these scores, these linear scores, if you're familiar with the way that classification is, is arranged, the scores are, are taken on a linear scale between two extremes. And I've just picked out some um, few key traits which I thought you might be interested in. Certainly it's, it's traits we're interested in in the UK. This is, this is the chest width, measured between the two front legs. Very, very simple. There's your very narrow chest width, there's your very, very wide chest width, and on average, how many lactations these cows actually last. This is a cracking example of an intermediate optimum trait. You can see that the animals, with a bang on five, they don't want to be wide as the house. Dairy strength's a big word in the UK at the moment. Right? You know, you want strength with the front end and heart room. You certainly do not want them too wide, that's increasing body weight. And likewise, you don't want them too narrow. Another trait is, is body depth. Again, this is another one taught with dairy strength. Again, there's, there's some sort of optimal, but it's certainly not at either extreme. If you get into this realm, you're getting a really heavy cow. You're putting stress on legs and feet, live weights going on. But likewise, you don't want anything too shallow. Intakes are very important. Okay, here's angularity, the interesting one. You'd expect, you know, probably for it to be less. We're putting less emphasis on it, remember. But what we're saying is, we don't want it to either of these extremes. You actually take animals up here, they're probably so extreme and milking so hard, this is where you're getting issues with your fertility, not getting those cows back in calf, calving intervals, stretching. Down here, she's giving you nothing. We don't want to breed the milk out of the cows, it's very important. What we're looking for is to target the breeding goal in this area to try and maximise log empty. So here we're going to have a look at some other traits, because I think other traits are pretty important. We've got rear udder height, thanks large, that's pretty linear. And here's the depth, but the, uns the correlation between these two is, is, is massive. You breed one, you get the other. You know, nice, high, high rear rudders. You're getting, you're getting other depth that's a lot shallower. And as you can see here, you know, 
you don't want animals that have too too tight and, and, uh, and shallow depth in the rudder because then you lose the milking ability, but you do want really good tight rudders. Here's one that interests me, four rudder attachment. This is one of the highest correlated traits to longevity in the UK as a predictor. But again, down here back at nine, as soon as you get a, a, another that's far, far too attached to the wall, you're losing that texture, you're losing the milking ability. And this is only common sense. The milking cows, as I have been in the past, and the dairy farm, these graphs make sense to me. This is other support. You guys will call this other cleft, probably. And this is the tight, um, tight other cleft between the, between the other cent central ligament. Up here makes sense to me too because whilst you want a good strongly attached udder, you don't want them too strong because what you end up is those back teeth starting to cross and that creates an absolute havoc if you're in the parlour and you've got 500 cows to get through. So you know, these graphs do make sense phenotypically and make sense for our breeding hole too. I'm going to show you a couple of, um, a couple of traits now that you might not have seen before. Particularly, um, this, this one here is actually locomotion. Now this is a trait that was originally unique to the UK. It's actually measured when the cow um, is in motion and it features extremely strongly in our type, both type and profit indexes and is very, very highly correlated to longevity. It's an excellent predictor of longevity. You can see it's almost linear fashion. Um, another key trait is used in, in the UK and especially in our national fertility index is condition score. I don't know if you guys are using this over here quite a lot, but condition score for us is a very important trait. Um, and this graph again, just like the chest width, really demonstrates the value of an intermediate optimum. You know, you don't want a cow that's really, really fat looking after itself and not looking after you. But likewise, an animal that's milking off its back continuously, it's very, very difficult to get in the car. So, here's a summary. Hopefully we kept the seven minutes. Um, the UK breeding system really and, and the index system in the UK has had to adapt and change and meet the needs of our producers particularly and also we think producers worldwide. We've been at huge risk of our producers becoming disillusioned with Holstein cattle. These are the big ones. Farm sizes are getting bigger, average herd size is getting bigger and this labour on farm is, is a big, big issue. We have to make these cows easy to manage and 